Hello and welcome back. I'm going to continue on here with this custom animal pasture setup. Um, got all the triggers placed pretty much, I think, in uh, the first video. Um, there might be something over here that needs to be moved. Now let's have a look, see what we've got. What's that one? That one is feeding trough. Oh, yes, because I need to actually get a feeding trough to uh, put into there because as I explained in the first video the feeding trough for the cow husbandry setup is actually built into the main um, building so uh, kind of need to um, and then I could separate I could put it into blender and separate it from the building or whatever else but um, if you're doing this and you're not sure on blender apologize for the dog He's, been in the river <laughs> he's having a shake about now um always when i hit record uh so yeah i'm going to use the sheep uh the feeding trough from the sheep um husbandry setup i think just to make things a little bit easier um but for those of you you know that do have a an understanding of blender or your or maya or maya or whatever the hell it's called or whatever maybe build your own or find something else that you can use um but i'm just going to keep it somewhat simple so uh, let's just um, see so if I go into installation folder or farm sim so farm sim 2019 data placeables animal husbandry if I then go to sheep possibly could use the pig I'll uh, we'll use the sheep doesn't matter which one just going to use husbandry sheep large that's fine because all I'm going to do here is just export the trough out as a whole and then uh, I can work with that so we'll take this one because it will have all the triggers and everything already set up for me so I can work with that so we'll just take the name from here make a copy of that file export selection with files and if I then go to the desktop Thornbrook maps and we'll paste that into there like so save keep parent directory structure keep game relative paths yes and yes Close that down, don't save that one though. And then if I go back into here, I can go file, import, feeding trough. Make sure we're in the right folder, feeding trough, import that, control X, cow husbandry small, control V, and then this needs to be at the top. Um, but we'll get to that a bit later on. I can move it up in the scene graph as I need to because it will need to follow um certain node and index sets but i can place it where i want to on the map for now though so let's just go control b and we'll put it here i'm just going to rotate this around and slot it into position somewhere here Something like that will probably be good enough. There we go. So now I have the triggers and everything set up here. And how low can I go on that one? Not too, too much. That'll be okay. That'll be all right. Um, <clears throat> so we have all of that set up there for the trough and whatever else. We have our feed trigger, uh, exact fill root node. Make sure that all your animal place um nodes are correct which they are that's fine and food spillage areas on the outside yeah that should be fine hopefully that will work with the terrain i'm not sure if that will work with the terrain because it's not the flattest so that's something i might need to have a bit of a play around with there maybe make this part a little bit higher up or more level or whatever else but again, that can be tested out and moved if necessary. And then our bail trigger and our feeding plane. So that's good. Excellent. Um, so we have that one set up. And then now that we've got to that stage, I need to create a new nav mesh because if I make this one visible, this is for the original setup and that's not going to be of any use to me anymore. So I need to create a new one. 
So let's just turn that off again for now. If we go into the visuals here, we have this nav mesh planes, which is what um, 19 uses to actually create the nav mesh with. So, what have we got here? That's fine. Um, so, what I want to do then is move all of these into the appropriate places. Uh, I'm going to keep the actual main transform group here at zero, and that will become more relevant when I get to the next the stage once I've laid out all the areas. Um, because to my knowledge, you cannot create a nav mesh within a map. It has to be done within its own separate I three D. Um, so with the name with the main transform group selected, we come over here to visible or visibility and put a tick in there. Everything then goes white and you can see it. Um, and we can then move our planes into position where we want them. So however you do this, control B to place it somewhere like so, that'll be fine. Uh, we'll just move it up just a little bit so it's not so flickery. And then it's just a case of rotating it around and moving them wherever you need to to get them in the right places. Now if you're actually creating this um, manually yourself, if you're creating the planes, so if you're going to go create primitive plane, which will then bring in a separate plane like so, it will be exactly the same in its, you know, it will be a lot smaller obviously, but it will be just the same. The only difference there, if I go to the shapes tab, it has a build nav mesh mask of zero and you need that to be ff so all you need to do there if you're going to do it this way uh, by creating a plane within giant's editor here um, just click on this little dot 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 thing here and click reset and it will put ticks in all the boxes and then give it a um, bit mask of ff and you just click ok and you now have your nav mesh mask created which will match what these ones are uh, if you don't do that, when you go to create a nav mesh, it won't have the right nav mesh mask set up and it won't work. So um, it's best if you can to just use the ones that are already there and then just duplicate them and resize them as you need to, because it will already have that done for you. Uh, let's just try and get this. It's very difficult to see the gizmo when you're zoomed right in. That's the only problem because of the, uh, it's quite, that is very bright. So you may potentially want to turn the visibility off so you can just see the outline while you're positioning it. Um, so you can zoom in a bit closer, so it's not quite so blinding. And then just position it where you need to, like so. And then we can just scale it down. Whatever we need to. Something like that will be okay for that one. Then just turn your visibility back on again. Go to the next one. Or you could just make a duplication of that one, whichever way is going to work for you. So this one here, um, and if you take the translate Y from here, and then apply that to this one here, again, apologize for the dog. Um, you can just do this. And move this one into position. And it will keep everything at the same height. And uh, make your nav mesh easier for the system to generate. So. Something maybe like that. And then we can again turn the visibility off. And select the next one. So do this one. And you can just see it a little easier. See the gizmo a little easier that way. And we can scale this one to an appropriate size, like so. Turn your visibility back on again. And you want them to be overlapping slightly so there's no gaps between each of the planes. And we can go to the next one. So we'll do this one. We'll just go Control B. <clears throat> and again, change your Translate Y to match the height of the others. And then rotate this around. Scale it up or down to suit the area that it's going to be put into.
something like that. And then this one here, may as well just use these. So again, we'll just go control B and click somewhere in there. And then change our height if we need to. There we go. Something like that will be fine. I think that'll do. That's probably good enough. It'll be an area, a good enough area for the cows to maneuver around on, do their thing. So now we, now we have that all set up. If I actually try and show you here, if I highlight the um, nav mesh planes main transform group here, I'll actually save the map before we go any further. What we should be able to do is actually just generate a, a nav mesh. So if I actually go to show nav mesh, um, I will delete that one though. Then we'll click on the nav mesh planes. And if I then go create nav mesh, radius for cows is 1.2, and our culling layer channel is zero. And if I then go create, Nothing happens, it all seems to lock up and um, freeze and I've got no control now, it's all gone all weird on me. See, not responding. <laughs> it's all, and it says here, no vertices to create nav mesh error. So it, for whatever reason, and it's all locked up on me, so that's great. Um, it does actually give you a nav mesh here, but it doesn't do anything. It's not, it's non-existent, it's not. If I actually press F to go to it, it's there's nothing here. Look, and I have got show nav meshes activated, but it's just given me a transform group with a nav mesh set up, but there's just nothing uh, associated with it. It's all bought. So yeah, that's not going to work for us. So we'll go back over to here, and then what I've been doing is actually exporting this out, this entire section. So call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. So we're just going to go file. Export selection, go to the desktop, and I'm just going to call it one. Like I said, it doesn't matter what it's going to be called, and we'll go save. If I then go to the desktop and open this up, we have our nav meshes. Now I haven't actually deleted um, the additional one there, so let's get rid of that. And you can see here now they're a different color. They're not the same color as they were in the map. In the map, they're actually uh, white, like this. But in the i3D of their own, they're kind of like a silvery color. Um, so yeah. So if we actually now highlight this and go create nav mesh, again, change our radius to 1.2, making sure our color layer channels is on zero. And then we go create. We now have a nav mesh. If I then go show nav mesh, we have our nav mesh. Uh, and this is the way I've been doing it. It may or may not be the only way or right way, but it seems to work for me. So now I would save this and close that down, go back into the map, and then we can basically make that non visible again by just taking the tick out of the visibility there, like so. Um, and then just go file import and double click on this and then take that from there and put into your main transform group like so and then you can just delete this these extra nav mesh planes because you don't need those to so just delete them and we now have our nav mesh plane our nav mesh set up in the area that i basically put it all together um, and that's the way i've been doing it it seems to work um, so yeah, just see what happens really. And I think this needs to be up here. Uh, oops, eight, yeah, I think that's right. And then this one probably needs to be right at the top. So let's just move that one up to the top.
yeah i think that's right um and that should be you yeah, know one two and so on and so on we can check those against the actual um xml when we get to that part so now what we should have is our husbandry set up actually set up it's all in its correct places and everything else ready to be um put into action so uh just before i do that let's actually move this one into the right place so control b and we'll just put our warning um stripes in place for the feeding trough Something like that will be okay. Um, yeah, so the next stage then is to actually export all of this out. I'm just going to go save again on there. <clears throat> now, what I would probably do here is um, if we actually look at one of the other maps, the in game maps, which I have in this folder here uh, let me just check yeah that's fine so if we go into here this is Felsbrun, Um and what I want out of here is basically the user attribute for the placeholder um, it's just a script callback uh, and what that will do is it will allow you to leave the object in the map and that script will just basically um, make it a non sort of entity uh, for lack of better words. So if we come into here, we've got all these different parts. And if I actually go into here and go to user attributes on the main transform group here, you have this script on create placeholders dot on create. And what I'm going to do is basically apply that to the um, husbandry set up in the Thornbrook map. Now you can put this against anything you want to have as a placeholder. Now, if you're going to obviously work with multiple objects, in a map that you're going to set up as a placeable, uh, you may want to make a separate transform group in the same way it's done here. So you have a separate transform group with all of the parts inside that you're going to have as a placeholder. But in this particular case, I'm just going to have it against this one so I can leave it in the map. Um, and if I need to make any adjustments, then I can do so without having to re import it again. Uh, so that makes it a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is just basically make a copy of the actual text here just so I know I've got it spelt correctly um, and then I'm going to open up the user attributes window in here and I'm just going to type in on create and we want this to be a script callback we'll go add and in here I'm just going to go control V and paste that in and if I can do so we can see that that now matches what we had. So we've got on create. It needs to be spelt in the same way with the uppercase C. And then our actual um, script inside the attribute window there. So that's that. Um, and I can then close this one down. Don't need that open anymore. And we'll close that one down. Okay, so now that I have that, what I can do is just basically export this out and create this as a separate um, placeable. So in new farmer mode, we will have access to all of this at the start of a new game save. Um, and we'll be able to buy animals straight away and then do whatever, or cows at least. But in any other mode, we will have, no, not that, we'll have this. So this area here will be accessible to place down anything else that we want to put in that area. And obviously the terrain is not, you know, very level in various areas. Um, so, you know, because of the way that this building has got <clears throat> the milk parlor sort of set up in here, it's a bit dark, but uh, there is a kind of milk parlor set up and it's kind of sunk into the ground a little bit. Now, theoretically, I could just fill that in smooth it right out um, and just ignore the fact that that's there but depends on what you want to go for if you want the visuals of it um, then you know that's not going to look very good but again you know whatever 
Um, and I'm just using the buildings that were here in the map in 17. So potentially I would possibly, you know, maybe use a different bit, different building anyway. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. But uh, use whatever's going to give you the desired um, result that you're looking for, I guess. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if it was like this, I could just use the terraforming tool in game um, and level all of that out, smooth it out to put down whatever I wanted to anyway. Um, and potentially with the terraforming side of placeables, it may even allow me to place it and it will just terraform the terrain anyway. I don't I don't know because that doesn't seem to work that great anyway, in my opinion. So it might tell you that the terrain can't be terraformed here or the placeable won't be, you know, whatever. But you'll just have to kind of work with that. Um, whatever setup you're going to put in, you might just want to use this area, you know, for other purposes. Re repaint it or whatever else into asphalt or rock or whatever else. Um, and just have it for a you know an area for putting bales or something, whatever suits you. So you know, but it's going to give you options. That's the point of this. Um, you know, if we have this static building there all the time, but none of the trigger sets, then again, like I said in the first video, this is just going to be a static building um, with no functions. So it's just going to be a, an area of land that you can't use for anything which just seems a bit silly to me. So by doing this, at least that way then, in Farm Manager or Start From Scratch, you are going to have access to this land to use for other purposes, which is, you know, what the whole idea of those different game modes is, I guess. So with that in mind then, what we're going to do is, let me just make sure I've got my placeables folder already created, but obviously there's nothing in it at the moment, as you can see there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just take, um, I'm going to save the map first of all, because I can't remember if I saved it when I added this. So I'll save this first. And then what I'll do is I'll export this out. So I'm just going to take the name from the attributes there. Control C to make a copy of that. I'm just going to go file, export selection with files. Go to the Thornbrook map, maps, placeables. And then we'll just go Control V, paste that in. And we'll go save. Um, yeah, that's fine. And that's fine. Okay. So yes to both of those. Now this may create a second textures folder uh, because of the way I've put it into the folders. Um, it's going to take these textures and then possibly create a new folder. Um, but uh, that's okay. It doesn't matter. So what we want to do then is if we minimize that one down. Um, go back into here so yeah it has created a new folder with all of the textures but these textures here are duplicates of what is basically in this folder so what I would do there is to delete that folder and then open this i3d and then change the path file name towards the um, correct place so in here I would put a dot dot slash in front of all of those so that it goes back one folder from here and then into this textures folder and that should link all of that together um, in the right places but uh, I suppose we could do that so if I, I don't want to overwrite things that I don't want to overwrite so let's do a dot dot slash let's take that and then make a copy of it. Um, control F, replace, control V, and then we'll see what happens. So let's do replace, replace, and just go down these, because it might end up replacing all of these as well, you see. So let's just do that. That should be okay. So let's save that, close that. If this has worked right, it should go back one folder and then into the textures folder and find all of the textures that are in there, which it has. Fantastic. So we now have that set up. Um, so let me close that down and I'm just going to delete that folder because I don't need that one anymore. Uh, so, yeah, you know, there's going to be a little bit of you know tweaking with things in various places to get everything right where it needs to be. 
Um, so now if I open this one again, what we need to do here is actually zero this one out because it has the same attributes as what it was in the map and we don't want that. We also need to delete this um, user attribute because we don't want that on the placeable. That's just for what's in the map. So all of these here need to be zeroed out because we're going to basically enter the attributes in the default items XML. And if they're set up with those original, with these attributes from the map, um, if, if you have these attributes in the default items, and then this standalone I3D also has those same attributes, it's going to double it up if that makes sense. And it won't be in the position that you want it to be in. So need to make sure all of these are zeroed out and the scaling is correct and everything else, but that's fine. Um, and then save this one. So we can close that one down. And like I say, this can stay as it is. Um, and I think what's that? Yeah, so I think what we'll do then is I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter. So you, you can sort of get your head around parts as we go through it and then not have to watch a two hour long video and, you know, scroll backwards and forwards through a two hour long video. So um, this is part two then. And then part three, we'll have a look at actually joining all the parts in the default items XML, setting up the actual XML for this placeable and the parts required. Because um, I want to go in game and actually show you new farmer mode where we will have access to this and then also farm manager. I'm not going to do start from scratch because that will be exactly the same um, as far as buildings go where we won't have access to it at the start of the game save. But I want to show you that that actually does work the way it's intended um, with this custom setup. I'm Shell Wizard. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.